Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today I've got nine new things to know about the brand new Garmin Instinct Solar. Now for this video, I'm gonna focus mainly on the new things in the Instinct Solar as opposed to the older things about the entire Garmin Instinct lineup. But in like one sentence or less, the Garmin Instinct series is essentially like a Garmin Phoenix Lite. It's got a lot of the navigation and kind of hiking and sport functions of a Garmin Phoenix, but not all the advanced functions like full-on color maps and music and all that kind of fun stuff isn't there. But a lot of the basics are here and so it makes still kind of an overall good outdoor hiking watch uh, as well as sport watch. Now diving straight into the first item on the list and keep in mind you can use the YouTube's chapter functionality to skip ahead and find which new thing you want to hear more about. Now it starts at 399 bucks and that's for the baseline version there all the colors you see on the screen right now but there's also a camel version which is 449 same exact functionality as the base except just simply a camo look to it and then also at 449 is the tactical and surf options those have additional features that we'll dive into later on in the video. Now, moving on to number two in the list is unboxing. I'm gonna do this in under 60 seconds, putting the timer on the clock right now. This is the Garmin Instinct Solar. This is the base edition. I think it's technically the graphite version uh, is the color that I have right here. You can see on the back the battery stats, and we're gonna talk all about the battery in a second. It's got an altimeter inside, it's got a compass inside, GPS navigation, all the same stuff from the Garmin Instinct in the past is in this one as well, uh, including my inability to open the box correctly. So here we go on top right there, slide it this way. Uh, you can see the watch chilling out right there. Bring this out, pull out the watch from the inside there. You got the foam piece, there we go. And then inside that we have a standard Garmin charging cable, a manual you're never gonna read, and then a warranty type guide, safety product information guide that as usual says that if you kill yourself using this watch, it most definitely is your fault. Sliding this out of the way, this is the same charging cable as in the past. So we just bring this down there. Same charging cable used on the 400 series, on the Phoenix series, on most other watches that Garmin makes today. It goes into that port right there. And then you also have the brand new optical heart rate sensor, which we will talk about in just a sec. There we go in maybe under 60 seconds, a complete unboxing of the Garmin Instinct Solar. Oh, and just a quick note before I forget, if you're finding this review interesting or useful or something like that, simply whack that like button down below there. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Next up on the list, of course, is the biggie, which is the solar panel itself. Now I'm gonna put this one off the side for now and through the magic of television, bring out the one I've been using for a couple weeks, which is this camo edition. Uh, now, functionality speaking, these are identical in terms of what they have in them. It's only the tactical and the surf ones that have additional features. So when it comes to that solar panel, there's actually two parts to it. And you gotta turn a bit of an edge to see where those two parts are. If I get just right letter, light there, you can see the light reflection. So this part here around the outside edge or that reflects that brighter edge, that is at 100% photovoltaic level, which means that it is capturing 100% of the sun's energy and sticking it into this watch at again, the 100% rate there. Versus underneath the entire under part of the display is a 10% photovoltaic level, which means it's only capturing 10% of the sun's goodness into the watch and storing it in its battery. This is a substantially bigger solar area than on the Phoenix 6 Pro Solar Series watches. So on that one, they have a small one millimeter uh, kind of outside edge that's solar at 100% versus this is that entire flashy area when I just kind of move it just like that that is at 100%. So that dives right into the next item, which is how to see all the solar information on the watch itself. Now, keeping in mind I'm indoors right now, you're not gonna see a ton of information, so I'll throw some B-roll here and there. Uh, but the first thing on the watch itself is this upper portion, that's that sun icon right there. And then to the right is a line showing the last six hours of solar intensity from zero to 100%. So it's always gonna show you in a percentage range. Uh, and then if I click down once here, I go down to the solar intensity graph. Again, inside, not much there, but if I show you some outside video footage, you can go ahead and see that solar intensity graph uh, much better over the last six hours. And in the upper right-hand corner, where that little circle is, shows you the percentage of incoming solar intensity. So that's divided up into 10 little blocks, and then the sun itself will illuminate once the 10th block fills up. Uh, so it shows you kind of that relative intensity over the course of the day. Now, in addition to all that, you can see this information on Garmin Connect Mobile, so on your phone app uh, and seeing the intensity levels for any given day in history. Now we're gonna talk about the battery life in just a second because that's kind of important. But before that, I wanna talk about the power manager feature, which is one of the next new features I'm gonna dive into. So if we go back here into settings, so hold down this menu button right there for a second and go down to settings, there is the new power manager option. So down at the bottom right there, power manager. And within that, you have two kind of core areas you can go into. One is battery saver, and then two is power modes. 
So within Battery Saver, this is effectively the nuclear option. This is the one that basically where Garmin threw down the gauntlet and said, we give you unlimited power. And when you do that, when you select this, go ahead and just toggle it on right there. It goes from my battery life lasting 12 days up to 59 days without any additional solar input. Uh, and it's once you layer that solar input in from these huge solar panels there that Garmin says you can get to unlimited battery. Now, the conditions with that require three hours a day at 50,000 lux, uh, which is a relatively sunny day. It's not like complete Arizona sun all day long for 10 hours, but it's a pretty strong sunny day. Now, Battery Saver does have a couple of downsides. One, it's gonna turn off pretty much everything. So it's gonna turn off all of your Bluetooth communications with your phone. It's gonna turn off the optical heart rate sensor on the back. Uh, it's gonna turn off some of the sleep tracking and it's gonna reduce the display a bit frequency. Uh, so if I go back here right now, this is what it shows in battery saver mode. You see the time, the date, and how much battery life you have left. If I go down right here, uh, you'll still see solar intensity And when I was outside because it's still gonna take that solar intensity levels in or sorry, solar energy in. The battery saver is just enabled, which means that pulse ox is disabled. Uh, my optical heart rate is disabled. It does show my day, so I can see steps and walking distance and stuff like that. Uh, and then text message disabled, calendar disabled, so weather disabled, and so on. So all of those features that depend on more connectivity are disabled in order to save battery life. But if we go back into the settings there into power manager, there we go. We'll turn this off and then we go down one into power modes. These are the new customizable power modes. These were introduced on the Garmin Phoenix series last year. And what they allow you to do is to basically decide which features of the watch you want in order to get the battery life that you need. So if you're halfway through a hike and you realize you never charged your battery before starting the hike, you can kind of go through these different options to say, hey, I'm gonna turn off the optical heart rate sensor. I'm gonna turn off something else and see if that gets me enough battery life to finish the run. So by default, there's two stock options. There's max battery and there's jacket mode. Uh, so in max battery here, it turns on ultra track GPS recording, which means that it reduces the update frequency uh, to go ahead and save battery life. In jacket mode, it turns off the optical heart rate sensor. So that way, if you had an outside of a jacket, you would go ahead and you wouldn't be burning optical heart rate there. But you can also go down and create your own. So I created one called DCR. And if I go into that, I can see the different options there. For example, GPS, I can change the modes. I can do ultra track with GLONASS, with Galileo. Uh, I can go down to phone and say, turn off the phone. Uh, and then for some of these, it'll tell you exactly how much it'll save. So if I turn off the optical heart rate sensor, that'll save me four hours. Uh, if I go down and uh, turn off the map, which is more of a breadcrumb trail map than a real map, um, it'll save me some unknown amount of time. If I put the display into a timeout, it'll save me two hours. And each time it's gonna change up here how much battery life I have left in that full GPS on mode which makes this now a fine time to talk about battery life in general. So I'm gonna throw up on the screen right now a battery chart because I can't remember all these numbers, uh, showing you the Garmin Instinct, the original version versus the Instinct Solar. Uh, and you can see it's a pretty dramatic difference. And now when it says plus something, that means additional time using the solar features. So for the smartwatch mode, it's 24 days at a baseline, plus 30 days if you have the solar enabled, which of course you would with the solar, and if you have at least three hours per day of 50,000 Lux conditions. Of course, if you have more than that, you'll get more time than that. And the same is true for everything else you see on the screen there. Now, you may be saying to yourself, how is it this unit has so much power than this one here, the original Garmin Instinct? And the answer is a bunch of other changes than just this. It's not just the solar panels. It's beyond that. And that gets to our next one, which is the optical heart rate sensor. If you flip it over on the back, you'll see the optical heart rate sensor looks different. Of course, this one just turned on, but if I go like this, you'll see they'll both turn on here in a second, uh, and, or not. Um, this one here is Garmin's newer Elevate optical heart rate sensor. It's the same one used in the Phoenix 6, the 4945, and virtually every other watch announced or released in 2019 or 2020 uses this sensor. Versus the Instinct from 2018 had an older sensor that was less power efficient and also less feature capable. This new sensor here in the Instinct Solar can do pulse ox or pulse oximetry. So if I go back here, all the way back to the beginning uh, and then go down once, there we go. This is pulse ox here. I'm just gonna put up my wrist here to make it a little bit easier for this to find that data. And if we were to sneak a peek under here, we'll do this really quick. You can see there's a red light that's coming in there measuring the pulse ox. I probably just dorked it up here. And there we go, the value 95% right there, then records that as well to the smartphone app, and I can see that later on. This is also something you can enable for sleeping, so it tracks it at night. Keeping in mind that the pulse ox feature on all Garmin watches is a battery blowtorch. It will blow through your battery, so 
do keep in mind that will significantly reduce your battery life. And so you got to really make sure you actually have a use case for enabling it as opposed to just enabling it to see the red light, as cool as the red light may be. Now, the next item on the list here that goes ahead and increases the battery life significantly is a new GPS chipset. It's not something, of course, you can see externally, but you can see in those power numbers on the GPS mode. The big jump of over doubling of the power of this one here is entirely because of the Sony GPS chipset that Garmin has used in their other wearables over the last year and a half. From an accuracy standpoint, I'm seeing actually better accuracy with the Solar Instinct than I have with the original one. The newer one, the Instinct Solar, has been pretty good for me lately. Uh, you can see my full GPS accuracy charts on my uh, review of this on the site where I dive into all the accuracy of both heart rate and GPS. Uh, and you can see that right now on the screen. Link is down in the description there. Now, last on the list is the new Surf and Tactical variants. So those are the models that cost $449 for the Surf Edition, two different colors, or $449 for the Tactical Edition. And those have additional features that these ones do not. On the surf side there, it includes tide data showing the oceanic conditions of uh, nearby you, so the tides nearby you. Then two, it will track surfing using a new surf mode. That same surf mode, by the way, came to the Garmin Phoenix 6 series in a firmware update uh, in beta over the last couple of weeks and should show up in production probably in the next couple of days on all Phoenix 6 series watches. So if you got a Phoenix 6 series, you get that. You'll see each individual wave surfed. You'll see the distance that you traveled as well as the maximum speed. Meanwhile, on the tactical version, it's the exact same tactical features from the previous Garmin Instinct Tactical, which gives you four core things from my list here. One is night vision goggle compatibility, uh, stealth mode, which means it disables recording of data to this, as well as communications off this, so it becomes like a little island unto itself. Uh, three is dual position format, so you can see both UTM and MGRS. And then number four is jump master, where you can jump out of perfectly good airplanes if you choose to do that. But again, you you do you. Now, the question may be, is it worth the upgrade price? Uh, well, if you're coming from the original Instinct, the answer is maybe. Uh, you know, right now, the original Instinct is retail at $250, uh, but real still gets on sale a lot for like $199. If you can go to $199 to $399 for just solar aspects alone, that's eh, probably a tough push. But if you're looking at some of the other features, like the increased battery life, so if you just ignore the solar side of it, like if you live in a dark, cold place um, and just want the battery life, then that probably is worth a bump there. I, and again, in my testing, I'm seeing significantly more battery life here in real life testing than I am with the older Instinct. So that by itself might be worth it. And then perhaps you may want something like the swimming heart rate or pulse locks. But again, it all depends on what you want uh, and what features you value the most. Now, if you found this interesting or useful, go ahead and lock that like button at the bottom there or hit the subscribe button for plenty more sports technology goodness. Got another video dropping tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.